Welcome to our new playlist, Reservations in Two-Way Slabs by Means of Yield Lines. This video, video deals with the general principles of yield lines. First, we start with the definition of two-way slabs. Mm. A two-way reinforced concrete slab is a type of slab that is supported on three or four sides, and this app is reinforced in both directions. This is a short, short version, a more complete definition you can find in the playlist of labs. Just give you uh, some examples so that you know what we mean by two-way slabs. A square slab simply supported on all sides, but the width or, or, or one dimension of the slab is uh, uh, less than two times the smallest dimension. This is a slab supported on three sides or on two sides, or you can have also a support by means of a column or two columns. You can also have a, a circular uh, shape, which is always a, a slab, a two-way slab, or more general uh, piece of slab supported by three columns. The yield lines. Yield lines are hypothetical lines in a slab where plastic hinges form, allowing the slab to rotate. They represent, in fact, the locations of maximum bending moments, or they give you a picture of how, when the slab is loaded to its critical load, how the crack patterns form. By definition, the needed reinforcement is the bending moment divided by the lever arm and divided by the yield strength of uh, the steel. But we add 10% security to this amount of steel. So all steel is yielding. Collapse mechanism. The slab is divided into rigid regions by the yield lines. And when the load increases, these regions rotate relative to each other around the yield lines. And this way, they are forming a collapse mechanism, which is an important element. So if, when you are uh, growing the yield lines or estimating where the yield lines should be, always think about that you need a collapse mechanism. Equilibrium. The external work done by the applied loads is equal to the internal work done by the bending moments along the yield line. This principle helps in calculating the collapse load. This is an upper bound theorem. It means that uh, this, this yield line theory provides an upper bound solution, meaning the calculated collapse load is the maximum possible load the slab can carry before failure. Plasticity. The theory assumes that the concrete behaves as a perfectly plastic material, meaning it can undergo large deformations without an increase in stress. This implies that the uh, com the depth of the of the this implies that the compressive depth of the concrete must be smaller than one quarter of the total depth of the slab. Work done is of course equal to the force times the displacement in the direction of the force. So for a uh, load, it will be. The, for instance, the vertical load, it will be n times uh, delta, which is in the same direction of the force acting. For a bending moment, we have a similar thing. It's the bending moment m multiplied by the angle of rotation. Then the general principle is that the uh, External energy expended by the loads moving is equal to the internal energy dissipated by rotation about the yield lines. And you can put it in a simple formula. Uh, it's the sum of the loads with their displacements must be equal to the sum of the bending moments uh, alongside the uh, uh, yield lines, but projected to the rotation axis, L. 
times the uh, uh, rotation angle. Let's look at the following example of a rectangular slab simply supported on all sides with dimension B smaller than two times A. So we have a two-way slab. It's uh, loaded with a uniform distributed load. And when you increase this load, a crack pattern will form and you will see something like in the, the green lines indicated on this drawing. So we have seen in the, the, the playlist of slabs how to uh, estimate the, the position of the yield lines. When, it, when there are two the same conditions for the slab, then because of symmetry, the yield line forms an angle of 45 degrees. When, for instance, one side is uh, uh, fixed and the other one uh, is simply supported, then at the side where it is fixed, you will have a 60 degree uh, angle and the other side 30 degrees. So now let's calculate the uh, energy of the work done dissipated by the loads. And so remember, it's the load times the displacement. The displacement, this we call it theta, and theta is the maximum displacement here under the load. Then you can see for this slab, which is rotating around this axis. So the total load is the surface of it, which is A times 8 over 2 divided by 2 times Q the uniform distributed load, but the mean displacement of this triangle is of course, when this is theta, it's theta divided by uh, delta, sorry, it's delta. So it's delta divided by three. So this lap, n times delta equals this amount. And we got two of those laps. So that's where there is a figure two. Then we have four triangles like here, and there also, so in total, we have four triangles. So it means one side is A over 2 times A over 2 divided by 2 times Q. And then the mean displacement is uh, delta divided by 3. And we got four of those triangles. What is left over is the rectangular portion. So the mean displacement of a rectangular dis uh, 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 Slap is, of course, uh, delta divided by 2. We have two of them. And the surface is, of course, B minus A times A over 2. So this is the energy of the work done dissipated by the loads. Then we look at the work done by the internal bending moments. We assume that, that's, we assume that the internal bending moment equals M. Then you look at this, uh, those yield lines, we project them vertically to the rotation axis and the, and the length L of the rotation axis is then B times the bending moment M and then times the angle of rotation, which is of course, this is delta divided by this distance A over two. And we got it, this is one and the other side for this rotation x is two, so that's that. On the other side, we have around the rotation axis, this and this one. So we have the yield lines projected to the rotation axis is A times M, and the rotation angle is the delta divided by the maximum distance A over two. So you can uh, rewrite it in a simpler way for the uh, uh, work done by ex uh, external and internal. And then we uh, uh, make E equal to D and we uh, obtain M. And M is then QA squared over 24 times this factor. Now we can have a small check. Let's see for a square slab when A equals B then you will see immediately in this formula when a equals b m is q a squared over 24 which is correct for a square slab uniformly distributed with a side of a then the maximum bending moment is q a squared over 24. and now suppose that b is very large uh, if you compare it with a 
so B very large compared with A, then you see that this formula leads to Q A squared over eight. And this means that it is not a two-way slab, but a one-way slab, the band, maximum bending moment of Q A squared over eight. So it seems that this formula gives you the right transition between those two figures. Now in this, what, what I've told now is, is, is a kind of a summary that we have already seen in the playlist slabs. But in the new playlist now for reservations in two-way slabs, we will handle the following cases. Suppose that this is one floor, uh, one slab, continuous slab. Then you have different possibilities. The first is uh, uh, an isolated slab, uh, simply supported on all sides. And I call this case one to case five. The orange elements are supported, like for instance, uh, brickwork or something like that. And the green uh, elements, the dark green is fixed ends, or when the slab is continuous, uh, like here, continuous, it's fixed, and this is orange. So simply support at this case one to five, the case refers to what type of reservation we will make in the slab. The others are uh, on three sides, simply supported and one side fixed eh, because it's continuous here. So that's case six to 10. Then we have case 11 to 15, two sides like this, simply supported, two other sides continuous, that's 11 to 15. Case 16 to 20 is three sides simply supported, of three sides fixed and one simply supported. And then we got 21 to 25. It's all sides are fixed. And I think, ah, then we have still uh, another one, which is 26 to 30. Two sides fixed, two opposite sides fixed and two opposite sides uh, simply supported. And then we have a last one, which is just in the other way around. So in the next videos in this playlist, we will handle each of those slabs in this configuration. And to give you an idea what the cases are, you have the rectangular slab and you see there's a reservation in the slab and this is case one. Case two is a reservation in the slab right in the corner, in the corner square hole. Then we look at case three when the hole, the, uh, the square hole is at the edge, which we call the edge square hole. And then we have a centric hole or a centric hole attracting the yield lines. It's a two uh, different things. In that case four and five. Then when one side is fixed, we can repeat the different cases with the different, different types of reservations in the slab. And so we continue with two sides uh, uh, um, fixed. And then you see when two sides are fixed, this is 45 degrees, this angle, and this angle here is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees. So in, in principle, those angles, we should maximize them. It means that we should take this as an unknown, uh, write the formulas, and then maximize this formula for this angle but we take the approximation of 45, 45, 30, and 60 degrees. Then we have on three sides uh, fixed, again, with the different cases of the reservations in the slab, and four sides fixed, and we go on like that until we reach at the cases 26 to 29 and 30, and then the last one, you see two opposite sides are uh, uh, fixed and the other two opposite sides are simply supported. So in the, in the coming weeks, I will produce some videos for all cases so that you can uh, easily choose which case you want to study.